I play uh, Nate Nash, uh, who is a CIA operative who um, who's a kind of a you know a nice guy, but you know with with sort of good ethics, who who uh, finds himself sort of falling for um, Jennifer's character. He's sort of fallen from grace early in his career from from uh, from Russia and gets a second chance to come back because he is um, he is keeping or controlling or working with a, a very high level Russian operative and and he's the only person that that operative Marble will will speak to and uh, so he's sort of cast aside but he's given a second shot because he's valuable in that regard and so he gets to um, make contact with. Uh, with Jennifer's character, who's sort of sent out into the field to get him and extract the name of his operative. I mean, it's incredibly violent and incredibly dangerous, particularly in her world, um, and a little bit in in the world of the Americans within the film. And where that where those two worlds intersect is quite dangerous, and yet it's not an unrealistic depiction. That says that they're all they're all a bunch of you know Nikita's and Jason Bourne's running around shooting guns at each other constantly, but there's something really inherently um, psychologically dangerous about the whole story and the whole world. When we we start the movie, we feel like we're meeting on one hand Jennifer's character, whose whose life has just taken a massive turn um, and slide downwards. Um, and Nate, in a similar fashion, has got something similar going on in his life, where he's, you know, by way of that action, he's caused himself to kind of have to tap out of his job. And it's the job is, is the only thing that defines him, because as an operative, he has no, no personal connections and no, no real family or not on his level, you know, no wife and no children. And, um, and he loves being in, in Eastern Europe, and he gets kind of sent home. So... You get two people who are, are, are doing the things that they love doing, and they take a big, they take a big step down. And in many ways, what's nice about that, on a, on, a, on a subliminal level, I think, or a subconscious level, or even a conscious level, is is that you feel like before they even met, meet, they're connected in some way, or they have something to relate on, about. In the beginning, it seems like she's checkmated into going to this school, this Sparrow School, and has no choice. And we watch her take everything she learns and take all the information that's given to her and turn that game around and just when you think she's been checkmated, you know, perhaps she's going to do the same to all of those men in her life that have treated her so badly. So in many ways, there's a real kind of empowerment story in there and there's kind of a relish I, I think there's there's going to be a real enjoyment of watching her take down all those people around her there's something quite magical about Jenna I, I find her to be one of the most in, instinctual um, people there's something very intuitive about her as an actress and I always enjoy her performances. There always feels uh, like there's something that's just sort of real and um, deeply connected to the story she's telling. Like she, she's, she's so on the right page all the time, but there's also something fascinating beyond that that doesn't distract from the story. So she sort of, you know, perfectly suits a movie yet elevates it at the same time.